Could somebody please make it make sense? Hey everybody, welcome to A Pop of Culture. I'm your host, the Esoteric and Facetious, and this is A Pop of Culture, which is my video essay podcast where I speak on pop culture, social justice, and human experience from a black, bisexual, millennial, Gen Z perspective. And in today's video, I want to talk about some conversations I'm divesting from. I am a commentator. I'm someone who loves having different conversations about social justice issues, about pop culture, about things going on in the world and society and black culture, the black community, etc. Etc. But I realized as I've gotten a little older and a little bit more mature that there are some conversations I don't want to keep throwing myself in and keep having over and over and over again. So I wanted to talk about that because I feel we as people, there are some conversations where they're tired, they're not going anywhere. Five years ago, we were having the same conversation that we're having today. And so I'm choosing to divest from some of these conversations because it's tired, it's old, and there's nothing new I feel that can be gained from these conversations. So let's get into it. What are the topics I'm divesting from? So number one, number one is conversations on colorism in the black community. Now, quick disclaimer, colorism exists in the black community. Colorism is alive and well, and I don't approve of colorism. And when I see colorism, I call it out. But one of the issues I have with the colorism conversation is it seems like we as a community, me saying this, I'm a black person, I'm black American, speaking about the black community, not only black Americans, but throughout the diaspora, I would say my problem with the colorism conversation is there doesn't necessarily seem to be a goal or objective that we as a people are working towards. Colorism is a problem and a lot of us see that and a lot of us acknowledge that. But the problem I see with the colorism conversation is I feel it has turned into some people bashing any light-skinned woman who gets opportunities or who has success in Hollywood. And it turns into us simply pitying dark-skinned black women who don't get opportunities or are seen to not get as many opportunities. And here's my issue with this. We see a lot of lighter skinned women, even if they're talented, they're called mediocre and average at best. And we see dark skinned women who just become these pity projects. For example, a lot of people will make all these tweets and think pieces about people like Coco Jones or Kiki Palmer, just opining about how if they were a smidge lighter, they would just have all these opportunities. And I'm not saying that those think pieces don't do anything because I do think calling out colorism is important. But I guess my issue is a lot of times I don't see people putting their money where their mouth is. A lot of people were sitting here crying with Coco Jones in that video where she talked about what happened with Disney and Disney Channel. And they were just like, oh my gosh, sis, our chocolate sister, our chocolate sister. Things need to be changed. Things need to be different. But those same people, I did not hear them talking about Bel Air. Coco Jones was on the red carpet of the BT Awards. She's doing that show with, I believe his name is Terrell. They are doing things, making moves, but the same people who are boohooing about how she's not getting opportunities, I don't see them giving that energy to her opportunities. It's like, I remember her talking about having a Netflix movie, about having music coming out, but the same people who are sitting here boohooing, oh my God, Coco, our chocolate sister. The same people were not out here. And I'm not saying that you can't call out colorism while also not being interested in people's projects. But it's like the same people who will... And honestly, let's go there. It's like, I low-key feel like people will use colorism and stuff like that for engagement. They'll make a viral video about, oh my gosh, this is what Coco Jones went through. This is what our girl went through. But then when it comes for the projects, and I'm not saying nobody's supporting Bel Air and other projects, but it's just like... I see more energy on the call out side than on the, okay, this person finally did get the opportunity, so let's support them. So it just makes me feel like some of it is performative. But what do y'all feel about that? And going back to the pity projects thing, I also wanna talk about that a little more because I feel like there are certain people who we only bring them up as a part of a pity project or as a way to diss somebody else. And it's like, let's talk about it. It's like, can we talk about Kelly Rowland's music without bringing up Beyonce or these conspiracy theories about Matthew Knowles and people involved with them not trying to push Kelly as hard? Like, 
can we talk about her and her talent without bringing up Beyonce? Because Kelly Rowling can sing down. She is an excellent vocalist. She's a beautiful, talented, multi-talented woman. And it's like people will only want to bring her up to try to bring up, oh, this type of colorism or that type of colorism. And I'm not saying we can't speak about colorism if there was colorism in Destiny's Child or in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. But if we cannot speak about Kelly Rowland in her music, like she's a person outside of your narratives about colorism. Coco Jones is a person outside of colorism. And I feel like sometimes we can get so caught up in that conversation that we can forget that these people are artists rather than people we can pull up as points in our arguments. So I'm just divesting from the conversation and a lot of what I'm seeing is vilifying of lighter skinned people and pitying of dark skinned people. And I don't really feel like either of those things is bringing us closer to the goal of making colorism less of a thing, especially in the industry. And I've spoken about this before, but I also want to speak on biracial exclusion because I've mentioned this and I feel like this kind of goes in hand in hand with colorism and the colorism conversation. But I'm seeing a lot of people who are going out of their way to say biracial people aren't black. And I think it's a complicated conversation because obviously a lot of biracial people do benefit from being closer in proximity to whiteness. But at the end of the day, I don't like this trying to exclude biracial people because if you have a black parent and half of your family is black, that's your culture. That is a part of your culture. Cause that's my thing. Like if someone is black and white, they have a black and white parent. Of course their experience may be different in some ways, but they're still allowed to access black culture. I don't see what the benefit of excluding biracial people is because as I said, it's their culture as much as it's our culture. Now I will say if biracial people who don't experience the same things as unambiguous black people, if they try to speak over people, that's one thing, but people won't even give them a chance to access their own culture, our culture. Black American culture is not owned by any one person. And so being biracial doesn't mean they have less access to that culture, to that heritage, to that history. And I want to say this, and this may be controversial and that's okay. We can have these uncomfortable conversations on this channel. I feel a lot of people want to exclude lighter skinned people or biracial people because they are a reminder of how black people, especially unambiguous black people have been treated by society. And I understand that as a black American person. But at the same time, here's my thing. I don't think that it's right that unambiguous black people have been discriminated against after fucking building this country. But at the same time, it's not biracial Sue born in 2005's fault that the history of this nation is the way it is. And excluding biracial Sue doesn't fix that problem. And honestly, including biracial Sue and making her aware of her privilege as a biracial person, as a not unambiguous person of black ancestry, that's going to help our community to become stronger. Excluding her and bashing her because her parents chose to have sex that were a different race, that makes no sense to me. Vilifying and shaming people for being biracial or lighter skin doesn't make the community stronger. It just further divides us. So that's how I feel about that. I feel like we as a community, and of course the community is huge and people in the community have different goals and different objectives, but I do feel if people are wanting to unify black people and work towards a certain cause or certain goals or certain initiatives, then we have to stop doing things that further divide the community. But that's the conversation I guess some of us may not be ready to have. I feel some people aren't necessarily interested in Black people working together and building, making goals happen, working together. It seems some people are okay with building these separate sections of the community and having these circular discussions, collecting some AdSense, getting some patrons. It seems that's what they're into and obviously it's keeping them paid, but it doesn't necessarily seem like it's helping the community overall. That goes into my next point. I am divesting from the whole gender wars in the black community. I'm so tired of watching videos where black women complain about black men and where black men complain about black women. It's just tired and old. There are things that black women do that are problematic. There are things that black men do that are problematic, but I feel like this circular conversation of just complaining and complaining and complaining isn't working. And that's why we have this circular conversation. 
I am for quote unquote protecting black women, but it's kind of difficult to quote unquote protect black women when those same black women are vilifying and constantly bashing black men as a black man. It's tired, it's circular, it's not going anywhere. I will pay attention to black women and black men that interest me. Like if you're a content creator who's a black man or a black woman and I'm interested in your content, what you have to say, I'll listen to what you have to say, but I'm not going to constantly engage with this niggas ain't shit, you know, black women are the problem, et cetera, et cetera. Like I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. There are issues with black men and their issues with black women. And a lot of those issues are with individual black men and individual black women, because clearly there are black men and black women who are having successful relationships, who are doing things in this world making moves so obviously this whole gender wars thing isn't stopping people from meeting getting married having kids having families etc etc so i guess for me this circular conversation it's going to stay there because there's always going to be people there who are going to be willing to complain but i just i feel like there's there's shitty people who are men there's shitty people who are women there's shitty people who are non-binary there are shitty people who are black who are black men black women black non-binary people so it's just tired to see people constantly complaining about niggas ain't shit bitches ain't shit etc etc because it's just like there are always going to be quote unquote ain't shit niggas ain't shit bitches but what are you going to do to make sure the people in your circle the people you are dating what are you going to do to vet people out to make sure that you can find people who are of quality because obviously there are people of quality who are meeting getting married getting into relationships so sis or bro if you are out here always getting in contact with people who are quote unquote ain't shit at some point we have to look in the mirror and say well what am i doing i'm not trying to blame people but i'm just saying this constant niggas ain't shit bitches ain't shit it's tired it's old if you want to find someone of quality you can find that but this constant conversation that's going on complaining about black men is not going to help you find a black man complaining about black women isn't going to help you find a black woman complaining about the black community isn't necessarily going to make the black community better you could say i'm complaining about the black community but i'm not really trying to complain i'm just speaking about some things i'm divesting from so just this whole niggas ain't shit bitches ain't shit conversation is tired like i said there are people of quality if you want to find those people figure out how to attract those people and figure out what spaces you need to be in but complaining it's like people have been complaining and then five years a decade later they're still in the same place so maybe look inward be introspective figure out what you could do differently i'm not trying to blame people but this circular is keeps going on of niggas ain't shit bitches ain't shit and you still at the same place so that's my thoughts on that let me know how y'all feel on that thanks for watching like this video if you like this video let me know if you agree or disagree with the points i made in the comments below if you enjoyed this content definitely like comment subscribe and share that way even if youtube isn't pushing my content those who resonate with it are sharing it so it can connect with others who would enjoy it. Those are some easy, free ways to support a pop of culture. If you want to support this show financially, feel free to send a tip to my cash app or buy me a cup of coffee, both are linked below. All who donate will be featured in the credits of my long-form commentary and cover videos. There are two playlists that are going to pop up, one where you can binge watch my covers and one where you can binge watch my commentary. Enjoy. Bye-bye.